Laura from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey everybody, and all your dear friends, uh, both dear friends Ask and a, dear friends. Engineer. Engineer. <laughs> uh, welcome to Ask an Engineer, our weekly show we do every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. It's me, Lady Ada. Here at the Adafruit Factory, we do all the design, test, manufacturing, shipping, production, support of all the wonderful electronic gadgets that you know and love. Uh, with me is Mr. Lady Ada on camera control, wearing all black as usual. And uh, we're on air, and we've got an exciting show for you tonight. All sorts of good stuff, massive news and new products and guides this week. Tune in, it's nonstop. We're gonna be giving away some stuff at the end and some exciting, unknown to others, uh, uh, unreleased, is not out yet, don't ask. So uh, let's kick it off with this exciting show. What's on tonight's show? On tonight's show, the code is FPGA. 10% off the native store all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. Gives you 10% off everything except for Ada Box and what? Gift certificates. That's right. If FIGPGA. Yeah, but it's FPGA. FIGPGA. Use that, it supports us, an open yeah. source hardware company here in New York City manufacturing, electronics in the USA. It supports the people you see here and more. It takes a village to make an aid fruit. Show and tell people around the world showing their, sharing their projects. This was like one of my favorite show and tell. This was massive. Massive. 13 show. people. Yeah. Lady Never Adel, more. Adel, Baker's Adel dozens. In just a moment. Um, pack the mail bag will stop by. Read your emails to us. We have a lot in the world of Python on hardware. Time travel, look back in the world of makers, hackers, artists, and engineers, current events, and more. Help wanted spotlight jobs and skills from our Adafruit Jobs Board, jobs.adafruit.com. Main New York City, some factory footage, 3D printing. We have some videos from Noah and Pedro. We got some new products. We have some top secret. You're going to like this one this week. We'll answer your questions, and we do that over on Discord, adafruit.it slash discord we are in the live broadcast chat at the end we'll do a trivia question give away something all that and more on you guessed it ask an engineer yay all right so uh lady Ada, the code is fpga f p g a field that. programmable gate array that's right um, that's how you can remember it when you check out on the site we have some free things and i'll just say this there might be some more free things we're adding some more stuff and we're doing some but testing you'll at least get these You'll at least get these, but there might even be some surprises. Maybe even more. So what are the tiers? Okay, for $99 or more, you get a free Perm Proto half-size breadboard. That's our, like, that white PCB over there in the corner. Looks just like a half-size breadboard. Great for when you have your solderless breadboard projects and you want to make them permanent. You can then get onto the next project. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Um, let's check that out. It's easy to solder and it's beautiful with lovely silk screen. $199 or more, you get a free UPS ground shipping in the continental United States. This is trackable, insured shipping. Um, you can still get your stuff by the holidays if you order now with UPS Ground, so it's a good idea. Stock up, get a bunch of gifts, and then you can, of course, use that free shipping to save money so you can spend more on electronics. And then two dollars more, you'll get a free Circuit Playground Express, our all-in-one development board that has everything you need to get started programming in Circuit Python, MakeCode, uh, Code.org, CS Discoveries, or even Arduino, uh, as well as MakerBlocks, which maybe we'll mention uh, again this week. Um, all that and more at every level. You get all the previous levels. So many freebies. There's never a better time to pick up gifts for the entire family at yeah. the Adafruit shop. And there might be some surprises because we're adding more stuff. Okay, uh, UPS is the way to go if you're ordering in the U.S., continental U.S. Trackable, especially now before the holidays. That is a good idea. Postal, you'll be cutting it close. You never know. Uh, today, unexpectedly, uh, it was a day morning, so the post office said, even though we were a commercial customer, they did not do a pickup today. Um, so nothing we can do about it. Nothing we can do about it. Um, so by the way, if you ordered something yesterday or today, it was postal. It won't go out tomorrow. And then DHL International is the best way to order something. Um, again, you should do it now before the holidays are over. We have all the shipping guidelines posted up on our site. It's uh, pretty much everywhere you go on the site right now because we want to make sure you know when is the last possible day to ship. But we also want you to have enough time to plan so you don't have to. We want to make your holiday a good yeah. holiday. Yeah, be the hero. Um, and then if you're in New York City, um, on checkout before 11 a.m., we have same-day delivery. So, uh, Lady Ada, we've been doing the show and tell forever. It's like almost 10 years now. Yeah. And uh, I think this was one of the most packed show and tells. It was packed. So right after this show, where, you know, watch this, of course, but go and look at the show and tell from tonight. It's only half an hour. December 5th. Yeah. And watch this. It's such an interesting spectrum of projects spectrum. and um, interesting rainbow. people that are doing cool stuff. So who was on the show and tell? Okay. This week, and what did they share? Um, Phil B. from Adafruit West uh, was showing off a demo of some SPI DMA for uh, TFT displays uh, with a triangle demo showing how 
um, when drawing shapes on an M0, like a hello wing is what he's, he's using to test. Um, it can be twice as fast using DMA, which is pretty sweet. And that's not even with um, delayed waits. It's actually just like using DMA to, to just pipe out SPI data even faster than normal. Um, GP did a preview of tomorrow's John Park workshop. He's doing a Neo Trellis uh, filters demo and um, uh, audio input with like a, like a display. Um, that's using the audio library for Arduino. So that's using the, the Neo Trellis M4. No and Pedro um, have a 3D uh, printed bumper project for the Neo Trellis. Um, it's really cool. It's got like spikes and stuff. Uh, they also showed off a print that they found on Thingiverse for making an ornament out of the Circuit Playground Express that even ex has little button pressy thingies and it's fully diffused. It's a really nice ornament. I mean, the ones we have in the shop are also nice, but these are pretty sweet. Um, also, like a Hanukkah TIE Fighter ornament, which is hilarious looking. It has like a little menorah on it. Um, Scott went to the local uh, thrift shop and got Pitfall, which is sweet, from Activision. Amazing game. Um, and also is having an NRF52 party. There's so many NRF52s on his desk. He says there's like a five on his desk. There's the um, SparkFun NRF52 840. There's the Adafruit Spark uh, Adafruit NRF52 840 Feather. There's the Particle Feathers. He's got like three of them. So it's all NRF52 840 all the time. Uh, Mike B um, showed off uh, a demo for a guide that he's writing. The ABCs for Neo Trellis Soundboard. So we built a bunch of really nice soundboards. This one goes with coloring books. And um, as you press each button, it goes through A through Z of electronics, or you can do A through Z of animals. So like A is for antelope, and B is for bear, and C is for cat, maybe. Um, uh, so check that out. That'll be a guide coming probably later this week. Davis Stells uh, is also doing some Neo Trail stuff. He made a MIDI player, uh, but rather than actually like you press the button and it sends a MIDI note, this one actually reads a MIDI file off of the disk and then plays that using like the built-in um, CircuitPython audio playback and it can do eight note uh, polyphonic playback. So uh, it's kind of neat. Um, he's been having a lot of fun with the M4. He's like, with the same 51, I have so much space, I can actually write code that can do quite a lot on um, the uh, on the Neo Trellis M4 with CircuitPython. Um, you really, it frees you up. Like the M0 is, you can do stuff, but not like you can with the M4 where you're just like, you have so much space. Uh, the Hogan family came by and showed off their um, Cricut with Circuit Playground gingerbread carousel. It was just beautifully made, and when you press a button yeah. on Circuit Playground Express, it turns, and then it press another button, and I think it stops. And it looked really amazingly beautiful and delicious. Yep. Can't wait to eat that. Was that was a great project. That was a great project. Um, Christopher uh, showed off the very exciting uh, Sam A5D Linux Feather. This is an, um, a microchip slash Atmel processor. It's a, like a Linux-capable Cortex processor that has RAM built in. Um, it runs Doom. And it runs Doom. And it runs Doom built into the Feather. So he's, he's actually doing the device tree overlay, so when you load it up, it'll like he'll know that the TFT Feather wing is a display. It's really um, excellent work there with Linux, like really yeah. taking it to the next level of functionality. Like it's really easy to be like, oh, you know, like it boots Linux. Okay, I got a login prompt. I'm done. But he's actually taking it to the next level. This is really smart because you can start with the Feather form factor get Linux going on it. Um, also, he's doing some stuff with Blink and CircuitPython, but the Linux form factor means you get all of the Linux, uh, sorry, all the uh, wing accessories. Yeah. You don't have to develop all that hardware. You just get it by using that form factor. Uh, Particle is shipping their um, devices now, and that's also the Feather form factor. So yeah. anyways, it's, it's a really interesting ecosystem and a good time to get involved in electronics right I'm, now. Yeah, this is yeah. super cool. So he's, he's working on it. He's getting ready to ship. I think he has a, like another revision, and then maybe he'll... He'll be selling these on one of the um, popular uh, storefronts. Um, JMK is doing a JM Chaos refactor version two, all new. Right. Python three showed off the login screen. It's looking good. Um, you know, every I think every kid by like their age ten should refactor like a massive software project. I think it's good practice. That's right. You should do it in in, in school. Also got a Neo Trellis M four, and uh, is going to be writing some cool code for it. And then stuck a Halloween inside uh, an iPod Classic. And uh, you said it looks like those like sci-fi movies where there's a skeleton and it looks yeah. in space. It's cool. He, well, he was going to take his uh, Halloween, which is a skull. It looks like a skull. Yeah. And it was inside in no, an it iPod. Like a skull. And it looks like one of the alien skull pod. It, for, one of the stasis pods from like Alien. Yeah. And if like you're in a crew of five, 
always someone. Dude, if it's, there's five, if there's five of you, five, one of you is not going to make it out of the stasis pod. The other four people are going to wake up and be like, I can't believe it oh, happened. Oh, no, and there's it's like a, a failure. Skeleton, ah, it's like a skeleton. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so that's how you know. Oh, uh, yeah. Just watch out if you're going to go into the stasis pod. Yeah, it's like it's tragic. Just like the transport and the holodex, just those things. Brian they have, they just a, didn't make they have it. They a bad OSHA uh, history. <laughs> no, they really don't do a lot of regression testing no. on the stasis pods. Right, what, it's what, what, tragic. Else, what else is there? Uh, Dan came by. He, had, uh, uh, he didn't have audio, but he had video. He showed off these really cool magnet squares. Um, he's going to send us some more info because they look neat. They had little magnets, electronics, and they you could program them, and they had maybe communicated with each other. Um, Brian uh, wrote a cool demo for the ADXL 345, which is on, uh, sorry, 343, which is on, um, the Neo Trellis, so when you drop the Neo Trellis, it screams. Um, like, very effective demo. <laughs> it's very yeah. funny. Uh, also making a little display breakout for the 0.9-inch uh, color TFT that we use on some of our feathers. Um, Ranjib uh, came by, showed off the Reef Pie final, so he did a massive, like, six-part guide for Reef Pie. Uh, we've been showing them off over the last couple months. Um, I, I, how did big build a big project with Raspberry Pi and Python? Um, is, is not easy, but he did it and he showed off how to do it with Adafruit IO and also just demoed the final reef pie. It's, it's epic. It's a full ecosystem. We should probably send him to Mars to like terraform Mars. We'll probably be able to do a good job. A yeah. better job than the person who did the stasis pods. Yeah. He's got a lot of backups. <laughs> uh, and then Dana uh, got a CNC lathe called the Flash Cut. It looks cool. It's a little desktop CNC lathe. Yeah. And it looks like he's going to um, program in some CNC action. Maybe lathe some things. All right. Lathing. Okay. Show and tell. All participants on the show and tell get that scene on the show and tell sticker or other stuff we'll send you. Um, that was epic. Thank you so much, everyone. Like you said, that is our favorite half hour of the week. It's part of our Adafruit Live Series shows. Tomorrow, JP's show is going to be on John Park's workshop. Um, he sent along some videos of some of the things that he's working on um, from last week and also this week and the upcoming week. So I'm just going to play those one after the other, and you can see what JP's working on. What is he up to? Pre preview of his shows and more. This is how we're going to use the Launch Deck Trellis M4 to launch apps. Here you can see I've launched Chrome, and now I'm going to specifically launch my Gmail in a new tab of Chrome. Now I can switch between tabs or just hide the front application. Now I'm opening up VCV Rack Synthesizer and Helm Synthesizer. That's a lot of synths. You know what? Let's hide those. And now I'm going to play some music. And I'm going to adjust the volume. You know what? Let's just mute that. Now I can open up Atom for some coding. Switch between tabs again. Or go to Moo. So I can program a CircuitPython board. And then hide the front apps again. Switch back over to Rack. And now I'm going to take a screenshot using the crosshair screenshot. And now we can hide that again. And now I'm going to launch a little pixel paint program and draw a weird duck or something. That's enough of that. Let's minimize that. Now go back to Moo. Time to do some coding. Nah, let's just minimize everything and maybe drink some coffee. JP show is tomorrow. All that and more. Back to mailbag. These are the emails, letters, and more that we read to all of you every single week. And 
to all of us at our State of the Fruit meeting that we do every single week. This is from Alex. Hi there, I'm a dad to a two-year-old. While he can't quite work out um, electronics projects with me yet, he loves watching the weekly new products videos. Every time Lady Ada comes on and sings new, 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 he sings along with her. My fiance bought me an Ada box as a gift. Uh, I brought it in and before opening my son saw the Ada Fruit logos, he snatched it away, started running around yelling new, 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 new. I managed to get the contents out of the box, but the actual box, uh, but the actual box, everything came in. It's for the big Adafruit logo, so now it's my two-year-old son's new, new, new box. Just thought you guys new, might new, enjoy new, that. New, 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 Nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, don't forget, that by the end of the show, we'll all be in Discord. Um, we're there now. But Go there now. Ask your questions. Join up. Yep. Okay. Um, if you have a Circuit Playground Express, you should plug it into your computer and go to makecode.adafruit.com. Um, and then follow along. And then and then follow along. But here is JP's Make Code Minute of the Week. Take it away. For today's Make Code Minute, I wanted to talk about using the pin event block to read an external switch or sensor. Uh, so as you can see here, I've got my Circuit Playground Express plugged in with a couple of alligator clips to a magnetic door sensor. Uh, this is what you've, you see on alarms a lot of the time for checking windows and doors. Um, so what's going on here in this uh, make code session is if you head down into the advanced section on the left and look at the pins, we have a block here called on pin A0 pulse high. I've got two of these on pin uh, pulse high ones, I've switched them actually to pin A1, so I'm reading pin A1, and instead of pulse high, that's the part that threw me, uh, I'm just reading a rise, and down here I'm reading a fall. So what this means is, on the Circuit Playground Express, uh, I have pin A1 grounded through this switch, so the, the circuit is closed right now, to ground, uh, which means that the pin is resting low, as low voltage. When I uh, open that circuit, it is going to send the pin back high. So what happens is when I rise, and it's going to read that, that uh, signal right now, it switches my NeoPixel ring to red. And then when it falls or drops that voltage back down, it switches to blue. And so this is one way that you can use external switches with the Circuit Playground Express with just a couple of blocks. And that is your Make Code Minute. All right. Oh, that minute goes so fast. That's right. Um, and uh, that's also... But we have one uh, week. We'll be on JP Show tomorrow. There's another Make Code Minute coming up if you want to watch it live. Okay. Right. The Wonderful World... Blinka. Python on hardware. Ooh. Okay, we're celebrating. It is two years of our newsletter. Wow. And essentially two years of Circuit Python. Yeah. So uh, congratulations to uh, Dan, Katney, Scott, Lady Ada, everyone who works on. And of course, the big team of people who are the contributors. That's I mean, right. I, I, I can't name them all because there's so many of them. Yeah. Um, I will miss somebody. Uh, folks like Carol out there and Nicholas Toll, like everyone who's been part of this adventure with us. So um, sign up for the newsletter. Uh, that's where you could see a weekly progress of what's going on. It was uh, like 2,600 words this week. There was so much going on in the world of uh, it's like Python a magazine. Hardware. So speaking of, uh, last week, SparkFun released a new board. This is the NRF 52840 Mini. So it's like a Pro Mini-like compatible board. Yeah. Uh, it's got a you know battery charger connector. Um, oh, you want me to grab it? Oh, it's here. We have one. Hold on, this magical red box. This came in today. Oh, hey! This runs Circuit Python. This runs Circuit Python. So, um, it's got, yeah, the NRF52840 module, got a quick connector, on off switch, uh, reset button, and like a user button, um, battery, and USB. And of course, the NRF52840, what's really nice about this um, chipset from Nordic is not only does it do uh, Bluetooth low energy, but it also has built in native USB. So, very exciting. Um, we have an Arduino core and some CircuitPython development that is happening. So check it out, especially if you're getting uh, one of these boards, you can load CircuitPython on it and try it out. We're, we're, we're getting there. we got the peripherals going, Bluetooth is coming along. Okay. And uh, in the newsletter and also in the In Case You Missed It version, uh, Jim the Engineer at SparkFun has a quote. And you can read about why they chose CircuitPython and more. There's also a guide on development with Arduino and CircuitPython on this particular board. 
And for the folks who asked, we'll be shipping our NRF52840 very soon. We've been showing our progress on Discord and on our weekly shows. We like to test a lot. Yep, and so we've been testing it against all of our feather wings. So that's that's what's taking us a little bit of time, but why. we're almost done. Also, there's a port for the new um, particle particles that we're going to have in the store soon. These are the feather compatible feather form factor particles, and we also have folks who are very interested and in going to be putting Circuit Python and have put Circuit Python on it right away. Lee Data has been spending a lot of time, as well as uh, Brennan and some contributors in the community, getting Blinka, this libgipod thing which we talked about last week and more, on Linux. We have a pile of Linux boards, SBCs, well, board computers as they're called, and Lee Data got one working on an orange pie. An orange pie. Yeah, this is yeah. an all-winner H3 board. Um, you know, we've, been, we've gotten it working, Blinka with the CircuitPython compatibility layer, working on... Raspberry Pi and BeagleBone, so I wanted to try something a little different. So we picked up an Orange Pi board, uh, the Orange Pi PC Plus, and yeah, I was able to get GPIO, I squared C, and SPI working. So that's really good. It means that all of our drivers can now work on some of these boards, which it, you know a lot of people haven't been able to use them to connect to hardware because it's not very well documented. Um, there's usually not a really good binding library, but we have one now, and thanks to libgpod, um, we'll be able to support a whole bunch of different Linux boards. Okay. There is a massive set of CircuitPython tutorials by John Gallagher that were created for the Fall 2018 Digital Technology Strategy and Use class. The students had one class and session on Circuit uh, Python, then they were dispatched to create their own show and tell projects by the end of the semester. So you can check out all of those and more. We also have Noam Petra's project. This is a location-based music player that also has images. So when you walk around, if it happens to be at the location that you pre-program in CircuitPython, it will play a song or have some, uh, some voice and it'll play an image. They went to Disneyland, so that obviously is a lot of fun. You can go to Epcot, and when you go to the Mexico Pavilion, it plays the um, National Anthem. When you go to the Japan Pavilion, it'll do the same thing. It'll play the National Anthem. That's a very easy one, because you can walk to each country at Epcot. Um, there's a new Android IDE that works with Circuit. Python, it uses an uh, OTG on the Go Yeah, table. it's interesting. It, it, it doesn't use mass storage. It does everything over serial, sort of like Ampy does. Um, but it works with Android, and it got tested with the Circuit uh, Playground Express as seen here. And it should work with any Circuit Playground board. Um, but connects to the REPL over the UART, and you can program it, save files. And it's basically a very lightweight ID, but you can do um, you know, remote programming of your Circuit Python board with just any Android tablet yeah. or phone. Really interesting. Okay. There's a lot of, um, speaking of particles, these are different type of particles. Different, these are air particles. Uh, this is an air sensor that uses Circuit Python to detect the particle levels in the atmosphere, and this is the display. Part yeah, of it. and they're using Circuit Python for this, yep. I think it's a Raspberry Pi. And then Arturo is using Circuit Python to test a lot of peripherals and more. Here is a keyboard that's being developed. These are those Cherry MX keys, and this is a. Uh, one of the one of the fun things you can do is make a keyboard. Yeah, a little so mini mini keyboard. With a trinket or with a feather, you can do that. And then uh, this is a. Uh, I guess I would call For this free wiring. Yeah, this would be a mashup, and this is one of the freebies that uh, folks got at Supercon. That's a Hackaday uh, badge, and then they wired it up to a trinket, and then use Circuit Python to control everything that's. Look in at there. those like nice thin wires, those yeah. little magnet wires, and they have some wax to keep them from touching each yeah, other. Yeah, that's really nice. Cute. And then this is a cool MicroPython project. This is a Wi-Fi embroidery system. So the person was able to, um, I, I, the way we looked at, the, when I looked at this, I think this was a standard embroidery machine and then they used MicroPython um, and Wi-Fi to get it going. So this is a neat one. I have a link to that in the newsletter. Um, Moo has some stuff coming up soon. There is uh, the next version, 1.1, is uh, it's gonna be an alpha soon and they're looking for help and support. So check out made with, uh, Moo and also code with Moo. Uh, there's a couple of things that uh, we just released. Speaking of Moo, this is a uh, Moo cheat sheet. This is uh, someone in the community made this one. This is one for Python 3 mode. So of course we had to make one for Circuit Python mode. Yes. So Mike Rella made this cheat sheet. So if you're using Moo to program Circuit Python, you have a lot of options. And it's in progress. If you have suggestions, let us know in Discord. We yeah. will add some, and and we'll make the cheat sheet the most cheaty of cheats. Yep. And then um, I did some 
uh, Python on hardware history. Yeah. So there was a couple ones. Was um, it PyMite? Yeah, one was PyMite, and the other one, let me find it, was uh, TinyPy. TinyPy. So TinyPy was a 64K. Uh, TinyPy batteries not included yet. That was in very, very 2008. Basic. And then PyMite um, was about 10 years ago, too. So this is interesting. They, some folks had tried this and now But pre-MicroPython, it's totally different separate implementation. And it's you know, they basically got just like the core parsing working. I mean, you, I don't even think it was nearly as full, fully featured yeah. as MicroPython got. But um, they, they did a very good job, 64K. Yeah. And, and that's all ten, they had at the this time. This was 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, and then also we cover all things in Python. So there's um, some interesting art projects. Um, this is some ASCII to uh, GIF. Um, Python scripts That's cool. and more. We did a big update to the awesome circuit Python list. So if you want all of this, it's on GitHub. It's awesome dash circuit Python. And uh, like I said, go to daily dot uh, sorry Adafruit daily dot com. We have a separate site because we never want anyone to think we'd spam them because we won't. And you go there, you sign up for the Python and microcontrollers. Um, it's all part of the Code Plus community, and that's Python on hardware this week. Epic. There is so much going on right now. And that's not even everything. That's just everything we can get to. That's everything we can fit in a newsletter in a week. Okay. More next week. Time travel. Look back in the world of makers, hackers, artists, engineers. Um, do you know what today is? Uh, Besides Wednesday? No. Today, well, right now we're doing Ask Engineer. I mean, what, what else could there possibly be? December 5th, 1979, Cambridge Processor 2, Acorn 2 Arm, 40 years ago. So, mm. on this day in 1978, a small company was born called Cambridge Processor Unit LTD CPU, which was, a number of days later, formed a corn computer. And basically, this turned into RISC. This turned into ARM. Yeah. Yeah, this is, a, this is basically almost all computing now. I mean, a, a majority of computing now is ARM-based um, from, you know, the, the, of course, all the mic controls and, and, and mobile phones. Um, uh, you know, Apple, of course, uses ARM. They are the A in, in ARM. Well... They're not the eight arm, but they are one of the, the co-founders of ARM with Acorn. Um, we use the ARM ARM chipset a lot here. Uh, you know, Nordic uses it for the NRF 52840 we talked about, as well as the 7051, um, as well as that Linux feather that was on the show and tell. So this is kind of a big deal. This is a a, a chip that kind of rocked the world. It took 40 years yeah. to get here, but it's I think by count there's more ARM processors than anything else. So check that out, Mike. I'll just wrote that up on our blog. It's there right now. And then some company news. Um, Forbes has a list. Everyone loves lists. Yeah. And uh, this one is America's Top 50 Women in Tech. Congratulations, Lady Ada. Yay! You made the list. Yay! Me and my friend Katie. Yeah. You actually, and we know some, uh, uh, Carol, uh, who we know is on there. Carol oh, Riley. Carol is also there. Yeah. yeah. And, there's, and, and, and uh, this is neat because you're an open source hardware pioneer and you're on the Forbes Top 50 list. So no one can say open source doesn't work out. It works out. You can. You too can be a woman on the top 50 list. It's possible. List. <laughs> 50 list of and it wasn't just me and 49 times Sheryl Sandberg, which yeah. I'm really impressed with. Sheryl Sandberg didn't make a list this year. Um, she had a fifth to work on. And there, uh, all the other women are really cool. What's like is they, they didn't just pick like women that everybody's heard of. They've actually picked a lot of really cool women that I yeah. never heard of. And so reading their stories was really neat because this is kind of a good way to get the word out that, the, yes, there's women who do all sorts of stuff. Okay. Check it out. All right, on our jobs board, uh, jobs.adafruit.com, we just launched this, and uh, we'll relaunch it, I should say. Yeah. And we're getting these amazing jobs. So if you want to work for the company that makes the Tesla of toothbrushes, this is called Quip. Okay. There's a job for you. Yeah, if you're an engineer, let, this is the job lead is up there. Lead engineer. It is a lead electrical engineer. Um, this is Quip. They're, these are pretty cool looking. Yeah, this, they are literally called this the, is the Tesla of, of, of space tooth toothbrush. Yeah, space toothbrush. Okay. Anyways, that job and many others are on the Adafruit Jobs Board. Um, well, everybody's got teeth, yeah. and they're great to have. Yep. Okay. Um, open source hardware, before we get to the learn guides, yeah. um, we just posted about this. There is a Feather This is and This is a double. FPGA, yeah, yeah, this is like, there's so much stuff going here. It's a Feather with a LoRaWAN module on the back, which you can't see here because it's on the back. It's a SX1276 or whatever. But the main chip is an ICE-40 that's running the RISC-V core. So people are really liking these ICE-40 FPGAs. I don't know if you know, but the code is FPGA today. Um, it's the same basic chip. The ICE-40 chip is on here as well. And it's running not an ARM core, but a RISC core, which is interesting. I wonder 40 years from now, we'll be like, remember when RISC-V came out? So it's running the, the RISC-V core. And then um, they're Hopefully going to get USB going on it, and then LoRa going on it, and it's kind of interesting. It's like they wanted to have a, a chip yeah. that was an FPGA but could run, you know, can run any kind of processor. So yeah, very very weird stuff happening in the maker community. What's very neat is stuff. like it's um, 
you know, if you, if you if you love something, let it go. That you know, if you love someone, let it go. But this yeah. is this one's a little different. This is if you love something, publish and make it open source. We shared the spec. We shared the spec. Um, we want people to make um, feather compatible stuff, and we're seeing a menagerie. You can say that a menagerie, menagerie. of feather forms. You've been stuff. using that word a lot this week. Yes, and on the uh, so that's the hardware. On the the software side, um, we're seeing tons of people doing their own boards and putting Circuit Python on it. So we got one of these in the mail. Yeah. Thank you. Hey. Yeah, this is Mini Sam. Sam. And this runs Circuit Python. So we're going to have this. Yeah. So we're going to have this. uh, I'm going to be doing a a blog post shortly. But um, this is just one of many boards that now support uh, Circuit Python. So make sure you check uh, the Circuit Python Discord. And we have a bunch of information if you want to get your board included every time we do the builds. Um, we can help Neat. you out with that. Um, also, just got to give a shout out. So um, she stopped by not too long ago. You probably know her from Circuit Stickers, Circuit Chibitronics. Stickers, Chibitronics. And she just launched a site called Patent Pandas. Look at these adorable pandas. Yeah, and it's super cute. But the topic is a little scary. So she has, like patent threats. So, so, twi- so we've been threatened by patent trolls. Yeah. And, and because they've not fully gone away, I guess we're not ready to say, like, like here's who's been bugging us. Yeah. Um, but so far, so good. We have good lawyers and everything. Yes. And, like, you know, yay. Yay. Um, hasn't hasn't <laughs> yeah. been a problem. But it's scary when you get this stuff. Yeah. So this happened to uh, uh, G twice. Um, she interviewed at Google, and the people she interviewed with filed a patent later about the thing that she showed. Yeah. Okay, so she has the full story about this. Then she had a Kickstarter that had these LED stickers. Someone made a patent and then approached them to buy the patent for $5 million. Turns out that person um, had already contributed to G's Kickstarter years before. I know, this is terrible. So it was a shakedown. It was very, like, it, like, it was like, oh my God, I can't believe someone would do that. It's so, a sad panda. So, so it's a sad panda. But what's interesting is G decided instead of not, instead of having this information, because it's all over now. Yeah, and usually people don't talk resolved. about this stuff. Usually and resolved. it's part of it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and usually you wait till things are resolved. So now that it is, or in the case of the person who has the, the um, sticker patent, it's invalid, but you'd have to, it's a very expensive, long process. So right now it's just like, well, like we're just going to keep doing what we're doing. So anyways, check out the site, because the stories are um, very detailed, what happened, who to talk to, and they're providing free resources and more. And I think when you get hit with these type of um, legal letters and lawsuits, the first thing you want to know is like, well, is is this is this has this happened to anyone else? What did they do? And what is it like? Yeah, because yeah. it's very scary, and you realize it's. I don't. It's, of course, it's not legal advice, but there there's a lot of things you can do, and it doesn't help to freak out. You know, there's a lot. Um, there's a lot that you can do with lawyers and free legal resources yeah. and friends, and I think that having a place that people can go and talk about this, like Patent Pandas, is going to be really helpful. Yeah. So check it out, and uh, as soon as we're done with our stuff, we'll see if we can add our story. Next up, we have 1,667 guides in the Adafruit Learning System. Hoof! Speaking of hoofs, <laughs> we have some guides this week, Lee. <laughs> okay. What guides do we well, have? Well, <laughs> we've got this, this cute build. Um, you take it to Halloween, you tie them together, and we have a, a firmware that gives you these adorable eyes. You saw the video at the beginning. Uh, we can show a short video. Um, yeah, this one is with uh, really nice photography, so you can see the beautiful eyes. Um, okay. What else? We've got the Flappy Bird demo uh, game from Davis Dells. So you can play Flappy Bird on a 4x8 um, pixel, which is actually very effective. And he actually has two modes. You can either use a button or you can shake it. Um, so you can like shake to flap, which is kind of funny. Uses the accelerometer. You got the 3D printed Neo Trellis and for bumper, we'll show the video that's from Noah and Pedro. We've got this secret. Don't read it unless you want to know what Adabox 10 is. Don't read it. I'm not going to talk about it, but it's live for the people who have received their Adabox or will soon. We've got the Moo cheat sheet. Um, this is a, a placeholder location for our um, Moo uh, cheat sheet guide. So you can print it out if you're teaching people Circuit Python or if you're using. Um, you know, if you're using Moo at home and you're just like, I want to remember all the cool things that are built in, uh, print this out, uh, paste it on to your wall or on next to your um, monitor. We've got a really epic guide from Colin Cunningham on using MIDI over BLE or the web. There's web MIDI, BLE MIDI, MIDI. Oh. That was um, using Bluetooth MIDI with our NRF52 Feather, or you can use Web MIDI with 
um, any of our feathers that have native USB. So just showing like, hey, you can use, we've had a couple of MIDI projects, but this is one that goes into the details of web MIDI or BLE MIDI. Um, this is an ancient protocol that has been uh, force fed into multiple new transport layers. Very exciting. Um, we've got from Isaac Wallace, the Circuit Playground Holiday um, Diorama. So using a cricket. So you can see using a cricket and a motor and then uh, cams, you can make a little diorama move. So more than just an LED diorama. From Kathy, we've got the CPX um, mystery dreidel. Cool is it lights up from the inside um, what letter so you you know it uses the accelerometer to know which letter and it also plays the dreidel song you got my guide on getting uh, blink and circuit python working on the orange pie check that out if you have an orange pie board and if you have one that isn't the one i use the orange pie pc plus uh let us know what the board definition is and we can add more you can um, link to the guide and send a port request that would be sweet because there's like 20 orange pie boards and we only have one um another launch deck trellis m4 that's from last week uh, JP did that project um, showing how you can program in different um, applications into a Neo Trellis M4 and launch them. We showed that video, of course, earlier. And then we've got a link to um, an epic guide over at MakeCode. This is kind of a holder just so people find it um, when they're looking to learn. Um, this is by Rob and the MakeCode learning system, um, a multiple, multi-part um, educational resource for teachers or workshop runners or just self-learners who want to use Circuit Playground and learn all sorts of stuff about computer science and programming. It's got crafting projects, it's got make code projects. Um, yeah, I think it's a really good resource for beginners, but especially for teachers. Okay. Whew, there's 11 guides. We have a lot going on. I'm in New York City, some factory footage. Here's some videos and more from here.
bit of soldering going on here. This is the most fun. This is when you first get a sponge and you get to like wet the sponge. This is like the most enjoyable thing about soldering. Yep. No question. And as always, here's a sunset or sunrise from the Adafruit factory. Oh, you can see some traffic windows. too. Yeah. It's nice. Occasionally you can even see like a star, but you might see some planes. I think you're seeing planes, yeah. Planes by, yeah. <laughs> That's nice. Yep. It does get dark earlier, so there's more dark to video. That's right. Okay, some 3D printing. Don Pedro, I have a couple of videos this week. We're going to show those now. Take it away, Don Pedro. Bye bye. <laughs>
Okay. But but if you go to adabox.com right now and sign up, you can you'll probably you will get you'll get another and, box. And you can if you have a sub- repeating subscription next holiday, you won't even have to. You can just right. automatically get the next box. This is pretty much the last code for uh, the last the call, last, last call last call for Ada Box. That's right. The the code though for um, the products we're going to show tonight is FPGA. Yes. So with that being said, Lady Ada, here we go. Let's do it. New 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 new. All right. Okay, we've got a. It's not totally installed quite yet, but you can sign up. Um, the next generation Cupcade is ready to rock. Um, we have totally redesigned it. It now works with any modern Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi 2, 3, 0, whatever. The Pi 3, of course, is the best because it's going to be the fastest. Um, it is the cutest little arcade. Um, it works quite well. Um, I can show it really fast. But yes, yeah, sign up. We're making a bunch. We will have them in stock. Do you want to hold it up here and then we can go to the overhead, or what do you want to do? Well, I don't want it to get unplugged, so I can, I can. I think it might be best if I just sort of show it here. Great. So hold on, let me get it to focus in. So yeah, I've got, it's, it runs um, RetroPie. So it's been a while since I've played RetroPie. But, you know, I can launch, I think, I get the Pac-Man game. Um, but you can run MAME or NES emulation. You can run even SNES, but we don't have a lot of uh, buttons. Um, you can get to the USB port and Ethernet if you want to on the back. It's a fun build. Um, it's all uh, these plastic pieces, and you get little... Uh, it's all in yellow, and then you get a um, marquee as well. And you can arrange it so you can have horizontal mode, good for like Nintendo games, or you can flip this around to have vertical mode for main games, and then you can have the um, joystick on the left, the right, or in the center. So uh, we've had this kit for a while, but we basically just did a huge redesign of it um, to make it now compatible with the latest Raspberry Pi. It's also easier than ever, and it's less expensive than ever. We've really optimized the build quite a bit. So sign up and pick one up, and uh, this is a really good, we'll definitely have them before the holidays. Uh, this could be a very good holiday gift for someone who likes um, Raspberry Pi projects and wants to make a little arcade. It goes anywhere, it's so cute. Okay, now it's time for a steel thing. This is a, uh, a steel-tipped PT-1000 sensor. It's with three wires, it's a platinum sensor. These are uh, RTD sensors. They're very high precision, high accuracy sensors, um, much better than a thermistor or a DS18B20. Um, the only thing is that they're more expensive and you have to use a special reader module, which we also have in the store, like the Max 31856, I think, um, as you can see here. And then you connect up to a microcontroller to read the values off. But if you need something with a like, really good precision, uh, accurate, repeatable temperature sensor, nothing really beats the PT100 or PT1000. Um, sensor. So we have those. Um, the readers are the readers are in the store. The decoding modules, and now we have the sensors themselves that have the little piece of platinum inside. So this one is PT1000, and we also have a PT100, which is the more common 100 ohm version. Ah, the PoE hat. So this went through a redesign, and so now we finally have it in the shop. Um, this is from Raspberry Pi Foundation. It's a hat that goes onto the Raspberry Pi 3 B+, the very latest one, and only the very latest one because you need to have an extra couple pins in order for this to work that are only brought out on the Pi 3 B+. But when plugged into uh, said Pi and you screw down the little screws, um, you have this little bundle of joy here. It looks like this. And it's, uh, you know, that Pi 3, and you got the hat, and it has a, has a little fan to cool it off. And then if you have a PoE router, uh, which I have over there. Well, let me get a little closer here. You're gonna do this live. I'm gonna do this live to prove okay. you do not need a power cable. What? You can just plug in. Yeah, you just plug in so the this Ethernet. Is power over the Ethernet. And so you power. get data as well. So you've got Whoa. power and data only through one cable. Mm. This is really handy if you're doing a lot of wiring, or maybe you want this to be. Um, 
in uh, like an installation where you don't want to have it, you know, because e Ethernet cables can go much farther than power cables usually. And also high voltage is 48 volts. And then that 48 volts is switched down to five volts safely. Um, that, so it goes into the Pi. So this can be good if you want something that's like 100 feet away, you can use uh, Cat5 cables and you'll be able to power and do data. Whereas with power plugs, usually the cables are only like three meters long at the most. Um, so this is really good for anybody doing that kind of stuff. And of course, the Ethernet, the Raspberry Pi works great over Ethernet. Um, it has Wi-Fi as well, but you know, nothing really beats wires when you have a, want to have a good, stable connection. So this is the new PoE hat. This is the new updated version, which works even better. They had an earlier version, and they fixed a couple things, and we released it. So this is that we release. Okay, next up. Going USB cables. So this photo looks really good. Uh, much better than I'll show on um, the overhead, just because it's uh, lit nicely in the dark. Um, their cables, we used to have EL wire cables and they didn't work that great and they made like a squeaking noise. These uh, have little LED crystals in them and uh, they look great. They have a couple dozen LED elements in them and uh, they look great at night. You can see them during the day, of course, but uh, really cool for, I don't know, land parties. What do you kids do these days? Anytime you're in the dark and you want uh, yeah. a decorative cable. One good cable. use is if you have a Circuit Playground Express and you're making the things glow and you want a glowy cable. We just thought these were cute, so we picked some up. All, make all the things glow. Okay. okay. Glowing. Next up. Next up, we have the US 100 uh, ultrasonic sensor. This looks a lot like the very common HCSR04 ultrasonic sensor. It's a little different. On the back, there's a jumper. And that jumper lets you select either like standard, like trigger response mode, or UART mode. So this module, not only can you do the thing where you like toggle the pin and then it sends you like a pulse width back, but you can also use it in UART mode. And this is handy if you have a microcontroller that has uh, software serial or UART but you don't necessarily have the ability to do that specific timing stuff, mostly because um, some of my controllers are like some you know, Python or Esperino devices maybe don't have such precision timing capabilities. In that case, use the UART mode. You send a character and it re replies back with basically the number, and that number is millimeters. And also has a temperature sensor built in, which you can get over the UART mode. So um, here is a little demo. Let me get my Ethernet cord out of the way. Oh, this is a very finicky Ethernet. Um, so yeah, you got it here, and it's updating a lot slower than you can. It, it's quite fast. You can update, update it, I think, maybe um, like 60 times a second or faster, but um, just to make it so that you can um, see the numbers. And then, you know, as I move my hand back and forth, you know, point at the ceiling, it's quite fast and responsive, and then it also gives you the temperature, which is, in this case, 22 degrees centigrade. And this is using the UART mode. But then again, you can always use it um, in the old style, um, HC, uh, SR, HC SR 04 mode. I'm going to show you this module. So on the back, there's a jumper. Remove it, and it's in that uh, standard mode. Uh, apply it, and it's in your mode. Another nice detail, you can run it at 3 volts. So the H HC SR 04 for 5 volt only, a little annoying. These can run at 3 or 5. So they're kind of like an upgrade. No matter what, if you have a 3 volt device, you won't have to deal with resistor dividers here. And then uh, start of the show tonight, besides Yule Data and our community, is FPGA. That's why the code is FPGA. Yay, you were wondering. So the Teeny FPGA BX, um, this is from Teeny FPGA Group. Uh, and they um, are selling these on CrowdSupply. We picked up a bunch. Um, it's an ICE40 FPGA board. It has a USB uh, connector built in. It also has SPI flash, which I totally forget the size of, but you can look it on the product page. A lot of pins broken out. And the best of all is all the guides. It's not just hard what you're getting. You're getting a lot of tutorials, a lot of information, a big community of people who are really getting excited about the ICE40. The reason is, is that this is basically the first FPGA, which is powerful enough to do quite a bit um, with, it's, it's not minimal. Um, you can put a big flash on it. And another thing is it, it has open source tool chain support. So you can- You mean it's not thousands of dollars? It's not thousands of dollars for the tool chain, but more importantly, you can run on Linux, you can run on Mac, you can run on Windows. A lot of tool chains, you know, they were really restricted in that you could only use them with, um, you know, Windows software. And it's like Windows 98, like you're, you're, you hate yourself. Um, so it comes with a card with all the pins. You can see power from USB. You get all this um, stuff. Again, it doesn't have analog inputs, for example. It only has digital because it's FPGA, but you, know, you can connect I2C and SPI devices to this um, if you want to add you know, analog. It does do stuff like PWM really fast because it's an FPGA. And on the back, you can see there's even more pins available. So if you even need more pins, um, check that out. And then here it is. It's, it's very teeny. 
And, you know, it's not out yet, don't ask, but I know that they were looking at designing a feather as well. So this could be uh, really interesting to see uh, FPGA feathers. Got a little button as well. I think this is probably reset or bootloader mode. And the bootloader's over USB. So again, you don't need anything else. This That's is all cool. you need to get started with FPGAs. Very exciting. It's just like, um, I've seen a lot of more work and development FPGA since the ICE 40 came out, and this is the board that people are using. What's that, Rita? Is it right? Yeah, new, 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 arcade um, emulator board, runs with the Raspberry Pi, has a display, a joystick, and four buttons. It's so cute, and that's upgraded to work with modern Pis. We have the PT-1000, it's a uh, platinum 1000 ohm sensor. Uh, we have the PT-100, now we have the 1000 ohm as well. Some people may need it. Pick up a decoder uh, module to go with it, and you can do precise temperature reading. The PoE hat V2 from the Raspberry Pi Foundation will let you plug into your Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, and those extra four pins let you do power and data over Ethernet, great for installations that don't need a lot of wiring. These really adorable USB cables have cute little LEDs inside of them when you plug them in. Of course, you can use them for data and charging, but they also glow, great for these uh, long winter nights and raves. Uh, the US100 ultrasonic sensor, is uh, a lot like the HC SR04, very popular ultrasonic, but it has a secondary mode. Not only is it back compatible with the, the previous ultrasonic, it runs at three volts as well as five volts. That's really nice. And in UART mode, um, you don't have to have so many special pin timing. You can just request data over the UART and it will give you uh, distance and temperature up to like a, I think a meter or more um, over the UART. Um, we also have the Teeny FPGA BX. It uh, comes with a USB bootloader. This ICE40 based uh, module is teeny but powerful. This FPJ has um, open tool chains available and a really wonderful community. Lots of pins available on the bottom um, as well. So if you are interested in FPGAs and you've never had a chance to try them out, this is a really good one. I, I like the, the feel of this. I think the open source tool chain and the community make this a great first FPGA board. And of course, the tutorials are fantastic. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the code for anything we have in stock um, is FPGA 10% off and native fruits are all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Everything except for Adabox and gift certificates. Uh, we have a top secret this week. We're going to show it really quick. Yeah. I've got... It's a robotic Oreo cookie. <laughs> no. What could this be? This is the, the this TFT be? gizmo. Oh, right. You want to see it on the overhead? Yeah. It's so not out yet, but you've got Circuit Playground Express. You put this on the back, and then you've got like a little speaker and the TFT. Yeah. But it's not out yet. I have no idea when this is going to be. This live. is really. Cool. I even yeah. I even I don't know. <laughs> There's just so much stuff I yeah. got to do with this. This is cool. This is, we were working on this uh, a little while ago. But what's neat is you get all the sensors speaker. on the buttons on the back and yeah. the speaker, and then of course on the front you can have a TFT. Got to think of how I want to do this bolt together thing though. Yep. Back in the vault. Back in the vault. Okay. Um, Let's do some questions. Okay. So um, go to Discord, adafruit.it slash Discord. That's where you make and share. That's where you can also ask questions. Ask questions. Slash Discord. <sighs> okay. Um, ask away. I'll see if there's any yeah. questions. Yeah. Get, any, get any questions ready for me. Oh, how long can the Ethernet cable be on something like Power over Ethernet? You know, there's a specification, and I don't know the specification off the top of my head, but I think it's at least 50 meters. Yeah. Because Ethernet is designed for, like, 50 to 100 meter runs. Um, I think it's called the 802.3 AF standard. There will be some document somewhere on the Internet when okay. you Google that'll tell you the length. Um, is this the updated version that fixed the capacitor bug in the... Yes, this is version 2. Yeah. We didn't carry version 1. People are posting many GIFs of uh, Gizmo the Gremlin. That's yeah, good. that's cute. Um, any idea where the Cricket hat for the Pi will be available? It's out of stock at the moment. Yeah, we're making more. We're making more. We had to get some parts in, but, yeah. but sign up. Believe also, me, we're... it's during the holiday season. Stuff is going really fast. We're you know chipping thousands of orders of a day right now. So things go in and out of stock fast, so just sign up. We, and, we promise you um, everything, everything we're working on. But yeah, yeah. We, are, we are getting depleted. This is, this is the time. This is the depletion zone. A lot of... 
people are buying electronics. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, more trellis. Yep, I know. Trellis is the one that's. Um, we have some more trellis boards. We just don't have enclosures. Yeah. But yeah, this is that's this is a challenge to keep everything all in stock at highway once. Highway to the depletion zone. Yeah. It is totally highway. So to it's the December fifth. So this is prime. This is prime pri time. Prime time. Which is why we tell people like order early. I mean, we we believe yeah. me, like we don't benefit if we're out of stock. But no, it's not a bad idea to get an Ada box because once in a while there's things like trellis on it. <laughs> it's true. It's true. All right. <laughs> Blink twice if the Grand Central's coming out next one. No. <laughs> you don't trick me. That's funny. It's a good idea. Shh. All right. The problem is that you're like, oh, it's like, are you being held captive? I'm the captor <laughs> and the captive. <laughs> you're stuck with us. Folks. I'm stuck. Yeah, you're stuck you're with stuck me. You're stuck with us, folks. <laughs> it's my fault. Like, who am I going to blame? We're the, we're the only people who want to do a weekly show <laughs> about electronics and run an Adafruit. Yeah. So uh, you're stuck with all of us, and we're stuck together. So this is this has actually worked out well. Um, let's give away some. We're going to give, we're away, gonna give away one of these FPGA boards. Wow, a teeny FPGA BX. Really? Yeah. Heck yeah. Okay. What are the uh, what are the rules? The rules are if you've won something before, you can't win again. Only one winner per my lifetime. The first person to call the magical Radio Shack phone here, and it rings mm -hmm. twice. I'll pick up and I'm going to say ahoy ahoy and that's when you should turn down your audio because otherwise you get weird echo effects and then I'm going to ask you your name where you're calling from and a project you're working on or you want to work on that's it's an FPGA number. project it, it's, it says own bit stab you have to decode that into numbers yeah but you're good at math you're good at math yeah you just have to turn that into numbers call own this phone stab. just look on your phone and yeah it's going to ring you twice you think this is the first time anyone's given away an FPGA an yes. open source FPGA live on the air yeah. with, with a phone yeah Mm. Can we see the phone? Yeah. Okay. So when this rings twice, yeah. then you'll know. This is my um, powerful MIT 1861 pen. Yeah, you have an MIT. Don't mess with this pen, by the way. This pen has destroyed lives. Yeah. <laughs> of people who deserved it. Yeah. <laughs> um, bit. Oh, oh, oh it's, it's ringing. Right. Okay, let's look at the, the phone. phone. Let's see if it's really ringing. Okay. Does it ring twice? It's ringing twice. I gotta pick yeah, it up. You, pick it you up. ready? Yeah, yeah. Ahoy, ahoy. Ahoy, ahoy. Hello, this uh, is Esteban. Hello, ahoy, ahoy. You have won a fabulous prize if you meant to call Ask the Engineer. That's great. That's great. First time I'm able to talk to you. I'm calling from Australia. Wow. I am uh, <laughs> the other side of the world. Amazing. Uh, What's your name? Yeah, and, uh, my name is Esteban. Esteban. Like Steven, but okay. in Spanish. Yeah. And I am working in a project with uh, electronics to implement IoT into trains to make condition monitoring of trains. So oh, cool. I have the fortune to to work in electronics. So wow. yep. Great cool. Your to boss buys all the electronics. Well, congratulations. We will ship you this teeny FPGA board all the way to Australia. We will do that. Um, all you have to do is email support at adafruit.com, S U P P O R T at adafruit.com and say, Hey it's Stefan from Australia and I want a product number four zero Three eight, four zero three eight. That way, they'll know exactly what to get for you, and you'll get this teeny FPGA. And then, if you're ever building anything cool that you can show off, come by on the show and tell. We'd love to see it. Definitely, definitely. Later next year, I'll be showing my my project, hopefully using this great present. And thank you very much. Cool. Thank great you. you. A great day or night, whatever Bye. time it is. Bye. <laughs> I think, it's, I think it's morning. It's four years ahead. It's four years ahead. Okay, well, see, it's that easy to win free FPGA boards here. Uh, so you're the only place on the internet that gives away free FPGA boards every week or something like it. Yeah. All right. That's our show. Okay. All right, someone had a question about what's the, um, the speed for a decent video for show and tell. You know, check the net, go to one of those network speed tests. And just make sure it's a couple megs up. I, it has to be like three or five megabits, I yeah. think. Yeah, and uh, this video next year um, we'll probably be using something else too. I'll tell you what actually works best is uh, Ethernet. I know people have Wi-Fi or cellular phones, but if you can do Ethernet, if you can plug into your router, wire for sure. Wire. I'm telling you, the wires are amazing. The yeah. next generation of wireless is all wired. It's wired wireless. Yeah. That'll that'll really help because if you know. If you have even a little bit of noise, you don't notice it because there's so much um, buffering when you use web browsers. 
but with video, it, it does uh, show up quite a bit more. Yeah. Okay, well, that's the show. It does the master show. This is one of my favorite shows. There's a lot. There's kind of all of the things going on in a show and tell, all the things going on in, in the world of making. And uh, I mean, it's jam-packed. It's great, the winter. We're not products. hibernating. Yeah. All right, well, that's the show tonight. Don't forget the code is FPGA. Uh, special thanks to everyone in the Discord chat, all the different chats, all the people in the Adafruit community, all the Adafruit team members that are far away, all the Adafruit team members that are close. We're all together. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for making this a very special week for us. Um, there is lots of stuff going on. We're going to be here next week. We're going to be here um, all throughout the year. I think we've decided to just do shows, even if it lands on like a holiday time. Yeah. Uh, be good to each other. Be excellent to one another. If you can... Um, uh, post your projects and uh, show up at the show and tell. We'd love to see you. Yes, every week. You know where we're gonna be. Yep. Okay. Nonstop. Um, here's your moment of zener. Good night, folks. <laughs>